Let's get down to business. Let me start off with a personal example. So one of the things I think about all the time when it comes to happiness and sadness is just family for me because my parents divorced and I didn't ever think that could actually happen. I didn't see that as a possibility because I really didn't see the conditions in which that would occur. It was a surprise to me and I was sad very sad. After a few days of being really upset about this and being mad, I remember being in my room and just thinking to myself one day, I don't have to dwell on this forever. I didn't have to resist it anymore. My parents could both be happier because of this. I could use this situation to grow and learn instead of complain and hold on to it. You know, I sort of let go of the illusion that in order for me to be okay and enough, I had to have a perfect family. I had to have a together family. And once I let that go, I could start focusing on the things I was really grateful to still have. And among all of those things, I realized that the divorce was like the worst thing that ever happened to me. Now, of course, that's sort of one example of something that's happened to me, and it's not extremely devastating at all. It's not even close to some of the hardships people have faced that I know about. I don't think that we have to endure hardship in all of its forms in order to accept and not resist what happens. We just need like a fundamental level of awareness of how things happen and why they happen. I think happiness and sadness, they go hand in hand. They have a commonality. They're both states of being and they have this ebb and flow, I think, that's tied to not only what happens to us, but how we respond to what happens to us. We can influence our situation and our mood by choosing how to respond to things that happen to us. I think it's only when we choose to ignore, willingly or unwillingly, to see reality as it is, that we enter into this realm of choosing one over the other or hoping one overcomes the other. Force positivity or force negativity. Forcing positivity and forcing negativity, force positivity may sound better than the other, but the commonality they have between is resisting reality, warping what reality is by thinking about it up here instead of actually seeing it. I think it's really like an ongoing tug of war between resistance and acceptance of what's happening. It's easy to only focus on one end and exclude the other. You can do that with either one. The big idea here is that I think we make our best choices when we can see reality for exactly or close enough to what it is and then work on either end. Not pretend one or the other doesn't exist. Like you can look at a magnet and it has a north and south pole and they're connected. They make each other possible. Happiness and sadness, they make one another possible. One can't overcome the other if one gives existence to the other. The other example I can bring into this is the movie Inside Out, as I always think about when I think about happy and sadness because they're the pure emotional states. Each character has that center. Inside Out at the end, spoiler alert, teaches us that the best way to approach this is to merge sadness and happiness. It's gonna sound crazy, but I read a philosophical Eckhart Tolle book that had something that it was almost like the movie took that truth and created something I could see that demonstrated it. And that demonstration is the merging of the joy of being, the joy of what's very, very permanent or what feels permanent in us, something that's always accessible to the sadness of impermanence and the things that change. It's exactly like the yin and yang. Joy at first couldn't empathize with sadness because she couldn't accept that that was a thing that existed that she could feel. She didn't really face both ends until she felt it. There's a quote by John Green I'm gonna pull in from out of nowhere. It's from a video he did on Deserving called, gratitude is the proper response to being a part of this crazy sprawling story. That's something paraphrase maybe. Once Joy got sad and she could empathize with sadness, she understood that both joy and sadness can lead us to a place of gratitude. They both remind us of what we value and that's why they're both important. And that's why I think forced positivity is damaging because what it does is it doesn't recognize that we can be reminded of what we value and cherish by both emotions. We can return to gratitude using each emotion if it helps us focus on what we value. The, my family will never be the same after that divorce happened. That was sad, that's something that's gone. But the joy of being, like the joy part of that is the new experiences that are welcomed and me living in the present moment now and enjoying that change as it happens. The other idea I think about a lot with joy is things that nobody can take away from you. Like the ability to sing, reading, creating leadership images, dancing. There are certain things, making art, doing things. There are certain things that are so core and fundamental to you I don't think people can ever take them away. It's the two merging of those things that I think creates the best state in me is the joy of being, of being alive, of, of choosing gratitude each and every moment for the things that I get to enjoy and the sadness of impermanence, the value, the reminder of the things that have come and gone and ebb and flow and disappear and come back and the new things that come as well. That's impermanence, that's constant change. It's like I can be grateful for the change and I can also be grateful for what 
feels permanent while the change happens. Choosing happiness, the happiness is a choice model I love from Shay Carl, I think is the idea that choosing happiness is being grateful, is choosing to be grateful in every single moment, no matter the situation. But forcing positivity to me feels non-genuine. It feels like instead of using positivity as some sort of engine to fuel happiness, to fuel curiosity, to fuel interest, it's an exclusion and it's a pullback and it's a giving up, it's a losing of hope. It's not genuine gratitude. It's almost like the idea as well of like faking sadness. When somebody fakes that they're sad and you can tell that they're not, but when somebody's really sad, you can tell when they're really sad. Or when somebody is faking positivity or faking being happy, but then you can tell when somebody's really excited and happy about their life and really grateful. It's the same kind of idea. There's similarity on both sides. Anything with the word forced in it to me, forced positivity, forced negativity, it always sounds problematic. It always sounds like we're resisting something, we're running away from something, or we're like gripping for control of situations. I honestly think the most effective and happiest and most grateful people are just seeing reality in its fullest, seeing all the nuance and still choosing to grow the positive and diminish the negative. They see all the nuance and the problems and they still choose to celebrate, rejoice, create value and grow things and leave the world as one quote love to call it, can't remember who obviously, make the world a little bit better where they are than when they found it. Because one can never overcome the other, ultimately it's your choice in which one you wanna grow. Do you want to grow the darkness or do you want to grow the light? Do you wanna light a candle or do you wanna blow candles out? Of course I'm branching out here all over the place as I usually do. It's not healthy to exclude par parts of reality. It's I think important and really important to see it as it is, as, as best we can, because then you can respond efficiently to it. You don't have to, you don't have to run from it. You can see it and accept it as it is. Or John Green loves to say, don't turn away. Just stand there and see it and let it change you. There's definitely power in just learning to stand there and see it. So what do you think about my philosophicalness and banter? And what are your questions and what are your ideas? Let me know. Keeping you, Chief TBA. Everybody, Palka, let me know your thoughts. See you around. I'm coming back into this a little bit. I don't know. I got some ideas. Goodbye.